Welcome to the Cock and Block. As promised, we're going to give you a little High Sierra camping trip video this weekend. We're just looking for a nice camp spot to set up for the night. Uh, I've actually found one, but it's so perfect. It's so perfect. I feel like I can't just pick the first spot, but that is really great. So I'm gonna sit up camp for the night. I'll show you guys what all equipment I've brought. We'll cook some dinner up here. I got a small step too, for those of you who know. Uh, we'll go from there. This is a great spot. Honestly, this is perfect. Right here. But I kind of want to explore down a ridge line over there. So I'm going to do that, but I'll probably end up coming back here for the night. I'm hoping to find a spot along a ridge like that, but just inside the tree line. And I think there's a ridge over here. I think I'm kind of walking towards the drop off. So Whew, I'm going to check over here, see if there's a cool spot to camp. One of my absolute favorite trees up here in the Sierra Nevadas is the Manzanita. And it comes in different forms. This is kind of the low growing bush, I guess, bush style. Uh, but they'll get, they'll get as tall as that right there. Um, I just think they're beautiful with the red bark and the green leaves. How's that for a pine cone? I don't have small feet either. Hey guys. Well, we made it up here. I'm actually back at the first spot I found. I went way along that ridge over there and it's nothing perfect. This is this is ideal. You notice I've taken the eye patch off. That's when you know I'm getting comfortable. So I'm gonna set up my camp. Uh, I'm gonna get a little sunshade. So the shade here is pretty good. Get a sunshade, get my tent set up. Uh, and then it'll be time for step two. Moved it a little bit, trying to find the perfect position for it. And again, this is a Gear Top Libre 3, I think it's called. It's a one person ultralight, but it's not. It's a one person four season tent. It's probably a three season tent, though I have had it up in the snow at about 10 degrees. I was fine.
was trying really hard to withstand some very, very strong s snowstorms. Um, and it did great. You'll see um, when it's when it's done correctly, the storm door sits out like this. I'm probably going to set it up as an awning, but you can stake it down like this. Stake down all sides. It's very stable in high wind and snow. See most people carrying those um, gas stoves, and they'll uh, uh, like a jet boil or something like that. And I like those; I definitely do. But when I'm able to, I like to use this. Um, though I did find a spot with a somebody built a campfire here. Uh, and I do have a California campfire permit. You gotta have a permit here to use uh, a, a campfire, or for that matter, a stove on federal land. So I do have my campfire permit. So I could theoretically fire up this pit, but California obviously uh, deals with a lot of wildfires. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use my my little rocket stove. And I'm going to use this sort of uh, for dual purpose. It's going to be my, my cooking set. But I'm also going to use it to get a little campfire going tonight. Like when it gets dark, that'll be my fire. It's very contained. It burns small sticks. It's safe and responsible. Um, and I love it. I love it. I'll show you how this guy works in case you don't know how these work. You've probably seen these. Uh, they're just thin sheets of... This is stainless steel, this one. This is One Tigers, the brand I use. I like it. It wasn't an expensive one by any means. So. There it is. There's the stove. And then you can uh, use these guys for cooking. We're ready to cook. Cook some lunch. It's pretty windy, so I had to make a few adjustments. But we're pretty set up. Wind's coming from that direction, so made a little wind wind break. That's gonna be my cooking area. It's gonna be a nice night. Uh, and again to kind of go over my my stuff my tent is a gear top it's a fairly inexpensive one i didn't spend a lot on it uh it's a four season tent uh so i'm probably gonna replace it soon today's night pretty cool but if it gets much warmer than this that i just won't do uh, my tarp is a little gear top i think gear top tarp both of those came from amazon Got them last year for snow camping. I've got my bare bones, not a tool, which is, I, I didn't bring an ax. Usually I'll bring an ax, but I just brought that. I haven't had to use it. There's so much uh, dead wood on the ground. My pack is a Teton Scout 3400. It's pretty common. Most people use it and there's a reason why it is wonderful. 
it's like the best pack you can get for the buck i mean i don't remember what i spent on it it wasn't dirt cheap but it wasn't like a 300 hundred dollar bag and it is amazing teton makes the best bags i'm just a huge fan i'm sure there are better ones out there but when you want to come in around a hundred dollars or so on a good internal rail bag that is just i freaking love my bag my sticks my poles are garbage i hate them they're gonna be i don't use them that much if i'm being honest uh i really don't use them very much these are only the second pair i've ever owned the first pair i bought like six or seven years ago at walmart and i freaking miss those things I, it ended up just getting worn out and bent and broken they were great i i thought i didn't like them because i you had to unscrew the um extensions you, you'd screw them to tighten them and screw them to untighten them and i always wanted to have a set with like these camber locks like this and then i got a set and i freaking hate them but again these were pretty cheap i think i grabbed these at walmart quickly on my way up a mountain they're bulky the locks themselves are so bulky like just that the plastic garb they're just it's too much i hate them I, I really hate these poles i don't like cork and i don't i do like the extended handle part this is nice i like that but i hate the cork they're big fat they're not heavy really but they're just they're just garbage so Anybody has any suggestions on some good poles that don't break the bank? I'm definitely looking. Uh, my seat. When I bought this, I thought it was like half the height that it is. It's buried in the sand. It's actually really tall and a really, it's a really big seat to put into a, I, I, that was in my bag. You gotta have a seat, but I probably should get one that is about yay high. But it's a nice seat, nothing wrong with it at all. It'd probably be great for like taking to the beach or something like that. Um, and that's that. I just got my basic little mess kit, my basic little bottle of wild turkey. I think this is a 15 degree bag. I talked about this earlier. Um, this is the first time I'm using this one. I bought it last year and I have I have yet to actually put it to use. Um, and I've got my my pad under it, and that's it. I've got my folding jacket there. Uh, it's one of those puffy jackets that folds up into itself and becomes like a little pillow. It's perfect. It's perfect, perfect for hiking because it's a great windbreaker. That thing will keep you pretty freaking warm. I think I spent like 30 bucks, 20 bucks on it, maybe at Walmart. Uh, but it folds into a really nice little um, pillow. That's pretty much it. Uh, I guess I'll show you one thing that I really like, and I don't know the brand i had to show you both of these so it might help you we're talking product reviews here so i have these two battery banks okay i bought this one last year i've i really haven't used it much i bought it because of that i thought it'd be great on hikes in fact let me stick it in the sun as you can see the little green light comes on when it's in the sun i just i don't like that one it it, it says it's like 20,000 milliamp hours, but I'm not entirely sure. This one says it's 30,000 milliamp hours. I bought this recently when I upgraded my iPhone because it has a, a wireless charger. This thing, I'm gonna show you the brand, Giga. It's a 30,000 milliamp hour, all that. This is the one to buy. It was not very expensive. I can charge my iPhone 11 easily, I don't know, four times with this on one charge. And it has everything you need. This is great. This is great. I brought this as a backup. Nah, I don't I can't I don't feel like I can depend on that for for storable power, but this one I love it. Love it. I just got a basic mess kit. I bought that off Amazon last year. I'm probably missing most of the stuff, but um, this speaker. If you guys come across this speaker, little Bluetooth speaker, buy it.
buy it. As you can tell, it's been well used. I bought it because it's snowproof. This has been in the snow a lot. That thing lasts like freaking weeks, man. The battery's great on it. It's good sound, all that. So I'll check back in with you guys in a little while. I'm going to probably take a quick little hike around. I'm having chili for dinner. I might have a sip of whiskey with my chili. As you can tell, I've had two sips already. Now, Josh will have an opinion on this. Josh isn't here, as you know. He's... He's up in the hot air balloon today. Let's all take a minute and think about Josh. Be safe in the skies, brother. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so, boom. I don't like whiskey. Josh is the whiskey man. I hate whiskey. But I'm Scottish, and I'm trying as hard as I can to stop pretending I'm Russian and drinking vodka. This is what I would drink in my 20s believe it or not. So this is very nostalgic for me, but I, I like the taste. It tastes like my 20s. It tastes like West Texas in 2002. That's what it tastes like. I just want to thank you guys all for watching. You know, we appreciate it. There's so many videos online right now. There's so many people doing exactly what I'm doing right now. And most of them are really cool. Like I, I love last night before I came up here, I was trying to get in the mood and I, uh, just gorged on YouTube videos of people camping, solo camping, and there's so many people doing it. It's so cool. I love every one of them. So I'm just throwing in my two cents. I love seeing how people camp all over. I just love, YouTube has made the camping community just amazing, and I'm thrilled to be a part of it. So I'm gonna go for a little hike, and then I'm gonna cook some dinner. Uh, when it gets dark, I'll shoot a little video and show you what it's like here. Uh, how cozy it's going to be, because it's going to be cozy. Hey guys. So it's getting pretty late up here. It's about 7.30. Sun's going to go down here pretty soon. The lake looks beautiful from here. I don't know if you could see that. I'm about to start cooking some dinner before it gets too dark. It's getting a little colder than I expected, so I'll probably batten down the hatches, so to speak. I'll probably pull this line down closer on both sides, and I may pull my storm door out tonight uh, because otherwise I have this open mesh right here that lets in the air, but it, and it's getting chilly. Um, but anyway, it's time to cook up some dinner. Get ready to hunker down. Since they are calling for rain, I thought I'd go ahead and set up my storm door. Pulled it out, got a couple stakes in the ground. Uh pulled in the sides a little bit so less air would get through um this way i can put my bag right outside the front door of my tent and if it rains it'll it'll be protected it'll stay dry it makes it a little harder to get into this thing um but as you can see it's pretty well designed for wind and snow and rain and all that Nighttime. Done a little hiking. Had some dinner. Had a little step two. I'm getting ready to hunker down and call it a night. The weather's beautiful. The wind actually died down, so an extra rain fly and all that it's probably not necessary but i'll be nice and warm in case the weather changes in the middle of the night i'm gonna sit here by the fire for a while watch a little tv maybe a movie i've watched a couple funny movies up here today just hanging out i've been having a blast uh thanks for watching this video 
I've got my fire going. I'm just relaxing. <laughs> 